Hello there, Flip here, and today we're going to be doing something a bit fun. So for a bit of context, I posted a TikTok on a series I just started called Mini Trials, where I'll basically be feeding you guys bite-sized Genshin courts that I can do more consistently while focusing on the bigger ones. And when I posted it on TikTok, I started getting tagged in a lot of other videos with people that also had really bad takes, and honestly most of them were lukewarm, except this one treasure trove the gold mine, the most bountiful harvest of bad advice and misinformation I've ever seen. The one piece of bad Genshin advice, and we're going to be taking a look at it. But before that, as always, if at any point during the video you're entertained or informed, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing, as I talk about various topics regarding Genshin's meta and I'll try to keep you updated. Now onto the main course, on TikTok, instead of just short form videos, there are also these things called slideshows, which is self-explanatory. It is just a bunch of images and the user, Zanesleaf? managed to procure a whopping 422k views for one of the most nefarious pieces of Genshin content I've ever consumed. Being their standard banner character guide, I don't think I've witnessed such cluelessness in my life, so let's just get right into it. Actually, really quick, the way they structure this is that they start by first listing the character's premium and free-to-play teams, which both ultimately mean nothing because they contradict themselves a lot. What does premium team even mean? They sometimes show a team that doesn't use much 5 stars, so why is it called premium? Is it because it's their best team? Also no, because they sometimes just show not good teams either. And then the free to play teams are just... <laughs> well, you'll see, because on the first slide, we get to see Deluxe free to play team, which is over vape without Bennett. Uh, the Deluke on this team is not really getting any buffs other than Sucrose's EM transfer, which on top of Deluke's low raw damage is not going to be doing much. Deluke kind of needs Bennett unless you're running a weapon like Wolf's Gravestone, and even then, his Bennett teams are still miles beyond his Bennettless teams. None of the characters in that team are currently free to play either. Why is Bennett not there? Because it seems for you free to play just means 4 star. And then after the teams, we have the weapon section in which I'm going to assume the numbers are a ranking in which the Wolf's Gravestone should not be first. That would B Serpent Spine if you have R5, but more realistically B Kun or Redhorn. And w where the fuck is Rain Slasher? For Artifacts, congrats, they got everything right, which is their next section. And they obviously got his talent priorities right too. <laughs> now on to Jean. It, it somehow got worse. Jean's premium team is not Zhao, especially at C0. It would more likely be something like Sunfire Riding with Yolan. And for that free to play team? Gao, nah. I think you actually start healing the enemy if you play something like this, because you are doing zero damage. What is Sucrose doing here? Like, actual question. Jean already holds VV just fine on this team. You're better off bringing Kaya, if anything, which is also more true to the free-to-play identity. Looking at this now, I just realized, why is Jean listed as a main team here? Her ass is not dealing damage. She is serving salutations to the enemy. Jean wants to burst very frequently in general because it's a decent contributor to her damage on top of the burst healing being the only form of sustain you have on most teams. Because of this, Jean very rarely built fully into damage as you simply need the ER, either through weapons or artifacts to burst. The only team where Jean does do any sort of significant damage is either going to be with a C6 Farzan or on Sunfire where it isn't even due to her scalings, but just because Swirl is broken, and chain reactions ramp up a lot in AoE. Which is ironic because on their next slide of ranking weapons, the weapon they rank number one is Jade Cutter, which is not that good for Jean on the teams you would use her on. Jean is mostly going to be a VV or Noblesse flex slot to support three strong damage dealers, so her best weapon is always going to be something that can support or help her burst. So Fav, Amanoma, or Skyward Blade and Ziphos for Sunfire teams. He did get artifacts correct though, Jean should also have EM listed as a main set for everything, and talents are incorrect. Jean's burst should be number one priority and everything else can stay unleveled as unless your Jean is extremely cracked, she doesn't do enough damage to justify leveling her skill. Now moving off of Jean, we have Kaching and uh, that was a jump scare. At the very least, they know that Aggravate is the only Kaching team worth using, but um, <laughs> That- that's not how you- If you're looking at Kaching's premium aggravate team, you would take out Kuki for Fischl, and hell, even Sarah works if your Kaching is really well invested with the Mist player. And then Nahida does work and will give you the highest ceiling, and you can reasonably use Kaching without a shielder, as she has lots of iframes with Kazuha. But both Baizu and Kirara with the Sapwood Blade can fill in this role without losing much on top of being much comfier to play. And then for the free-to-play team, you just use Kaching, Fischl, Sucrose, and any Dendro of your choice. Yaya was free a few patches ago. I don't know why for the other characters you listed quite a few options and then for Kaching you were just like, fuck it. Actually, you know what, that's kind of based. But yeah, you are missing a lot of 5 star weapons and Lion's War should 
be above Black Sword on top of it being much easier to refine. For artifacts, Kaching can use an EM sounds quite well and is potentially best in slot depending on buffs. And only Thundering Fury should really be here, it's just a lot better and is a lot more comfortable than not using TF. They got talent priority correct here, there is still some hope at least. Never mind, I'm honestly starting to feel bad. But Yula and Chi Chi are not going to work without Raiden. Chi Chi generates no en literally zero energy. This is the same as having no cryo character there and expecting it to work. Also, if you were playing a premium Yula team with Chi Chi, why is Beidou here? Hell, what the fuck does a premium Chi Chi team even look like? And for that free to play Chi Chi team, Move okay, if you replace Kaya with Jing Cho, it isn't horrible. It's Chi Chi getting carried by three strong teammates while having healing and fizz shredded clamp rocks. For weapons, yep. Artifacts also, yep. And talent priority, correct. If there was a single thing wrong with those slides, I would start to believe TikTok is spyware created to malform people's brains. <clears throat> Okay, now the worst Hydro character in the game. It's kind of sad that these two teams have been the best teams they give us, honestly, but there are still issues. For Morgana, if you want to look at premium teams, throw a cat toy or something and get Diana the fuck off. For units that will actually do something like Rosario or Shenha, you have Freeze on top of Venti suck, there's no reason to have Diana there at all. And Mona's free to play teams simply don't exist, so let's move on. Woodseth Mona isn't real besides that, yes, TTDS is generally her best weapon. And they covered their artifacts and talents perfectly with nothing much to say. Again, I would be very concerned if they fumbled there, but we move. Move on to Tignari, as we actually have a pretty good spread team for him. For more damage, you could opt to replace Nahida for Fischl, so you have a mixed DPS, Yai and Tegnari team. And you would get to on-field Yai mostly so you can trigger Fischl's attention for. Dari's strengths from someone like Al Haitham for this team archetype in particular is that he's able to front load all of his damage very quickly, not heavily interrupting your damage flow, which allows you to even play him on a Kitching Aggravate team quite well for a higher single target damage. As after he's blown all his load, you can quickly switch back to your Electro Onfielder and continue to aggravate with them. Also, I am only saying this to distract from the indescribable natural disaster that is that second team. It's not even what was the idea at this point. What concept were you even going with? Barbara is a character that needs to devour an enemy to apply Hydro, which doesn't pair well with Tignari, who is a ranged character. And what is my girl Kole even doing here? This is supposed to be a Hyper Bloom team, I think? Yet no one on this team can actually trigger Hyper Bloom, so you just get an awkward quicken team that loses quicken up time by the fact that you apply Hydra with Barbara sometimes. Nothing on this team synergizes well, it's an actual anti-synergy. Nari's only team is quicken, so if you were to go more free to play route, something like Lisa, Fischl, Kirara seems like it could work. I haven't actually checked the Tainari spreadsheet since his pre-beta, but this seems accurate enough to not be misleading, so I'll give it a clear. For artifacts, Tignari should be attack or EM, because unless he uses signature, they are about relative depending on buffs. Also, no mention of Deepwood is pretty weird considering the fact that it competes with Wanderer's Trope when you have another Deepwood user on the team. Then of course you would actually have to try and mess up Tignari's talent priorities, so they are correct of course. <laughs> and wow, we are finally on the last character being Dea. Hopefully they manage to not cook up something diabolical for the last run. NEVER LET THEM COOK AGAIN! Okay, premium team, sure, they cooked instant ramen. Dea has no real premium team as of now, but that second team... Ride in levels of cooking. What? Why do they keep putting Sucrose on every team she doesn't belong in? Is this supposed to be a virgin team? You just don't have the application for it at all. You are going to be burning 80% of the time with Barbara's application, and Kole doesn't even have the best of time either, and Sucrose. <sighs> Sucrose is giving EM uh, weapons. I have not looked into any bit of Dea TC, I'm not going to lie, but um, come closer. How? How the fuck is Dea going to use Serpent Spine? And also, the Bell? Debate Club? Black Cliff Slasher? With how energy hungry Dea is, I'm also surprised something like Skyward Pride isn't here with the 5 star stats and the energy recharge. On top of having a decent enough passive, artifacts are correct. For talent priority, there aren't that many cases where you're relying heavily on Dea's damage. Her skill should generally be higher priority, I'm pretty sure. And wow, it is finally over. <laughs> okay, that was really fun to go through. In the nicest way possible, that may have been the worst guide I have read. But even with that, don't send hate to the creator or anything or try and flame them. Just laugh and criticize the guide because of fuck me. That was something. If you guys have any other things on TikTok you want me to check out, make sure to go follow me over there and tag me in any malevolent posts you see. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on this guide, as I'd love to hear it and I respond to almost every single comment.
Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.